On paper, the UFC or Ultimate Fighting Championship is a mixed martial arts promotion which is home to some of the greatest martial artists of all time. In truth, the promotion isn't just a sports sensation drawing fight fans and curious onlookers to expensive pay-per-view events filled with promise of violence and excitement. It's a cultural juggernaut that turns fighters into celebrities shapes our cinematic and media expectations of combat, and even influences national politics. The question is, how did the UFC grow to be so big? And how is it saving America from unnecessary political correctness? In its early days, the UFC was not the giant it is now. It was raw and undefined, and one of its slogans was, there are no roles. The unregulated violence in the promotion prompted Senator John McCain to denounce the UFC as human cockfighting. As a lifelong boxing enthusiast, McCain wrote letters to governors across the country urging them to outlaw UFC events, citing, I've witnessed individuals being repeatedly struck in the face while pinned down. That's not sport. McCain's campaign against the UFC sent it in a seriously bad place. So much so that in January 2001, the original founders decided to call it quits. They sold the organization for $2 million to Dana White along with Lorenzo and Frank Fertitta. The UFC's new owners faced their own challenges and struggles. But guess who came to their rescue? The 45th President of the United States, Donald John Trump, an avid MMA and boxing fan who is now gunning for a second term in office. Trump is regularly seen at UFC events and he most recently appeared at UFC 302 where he had front row experience of the lightweight title fight between Islam Makachev and Dustin Poirier. Plus he also had an awesome chat with the GOAT Khabib. Trump's meeting with UFC fighters like Jorge no Masvidal. what your views are on Trump as a president, the guy's a bad motherfucker man. Money that he's made, the, the obstacles that he's conquered, he's a bad motherfucker in his own way, you know? No matter what your political views are. And who's he coming to see? Colby Covington. Oh, it feels great, baby. It's good to be here and have the Trump support. They're going to be front row in my fight this weekend when I retire Robbie Lawler. I heard about this. So you, you invited a Donald Trump Jr. to the fight. He's actually, this is officially, he will be sitting at the, he will be there at the fight? This is official. Donald Trump Jr., Eric Trump, Kimberly Goldfoyle, and, and, and a bunch of other people are going to be there with him. Wow. And Sean Strickland. Trump is a fucking man, you guys. I think we're all Trumpsters here besides the fucking Canadian. I've often come under fire from his critics who believes he's using the sport to his advantage. But if it wasn't for the man himself, the UFC wouldn't even be where it is today. Back when the UFC was struggling to find sponsors as well as venues, used to host events in 2001, Trump came to the promotion's rescue and invited them to put on shows at the Taj Mahal. Trump's invitation provided a short-term boost for the UFC's new owners. However, it was their savvy move to capitalize on America's fascination with reality television in the early 2000s that truly transformed their fortunes. The UFC launched the reality TV series The Ultimate Fighter on Spike TV which reshaped the promotion's image for casual viewers. This series introduced a fresh perspective on the sport to a wider audience during the reality TV boom, proving to be highly successful. The success of the first season of The Ultimate Fighter led to subsequent seasons and lucrative deals with ESPN. Over time, the UFC grew into a billion dollar sports organization. Today, the UFC holds so much power that it isn't afraid of standing up to political correctness. For instance, UFC president Dana White religiously protects fighters' freedom of expression, with Sean Strickland's case being the most recent example of it. The former UFC middleweight champion made a few stingy and homophobic remarks before his title defense against Drikas Duplessis at UFC 297. He was under an insane amount of pressure to apologize. Years ago, you said if I had a gay son, I would think I'd... Oh, look, another, another, I'm saying it's it's in the swamp, you guys, the swamp. You become a champion, you become a star, and then someone says... Let me ask you something. Are you, are you, are you gay? No, are you, are you, let me know, are you gay? Can I, can I get an answer? Well, no, I'm asking, I'm, this is a quiet, are you, are you a gay man? I'm an ally of the community. Okay. If you had a son, then he was like, you know, you had a son, he was gay, you'd be like, oh man, you don't, you don't want a grandkid? No problem with it. Oh man, well, you, dude, you're a weak fucking man, dude. You're like, you're part of the fucking problem. You elected just. Even Dana White was asked to punish the former champ, but the UFC harshly refused to do that, saying that he doesn't put leashes on his fighters. I'm saying you a leash? I'm st like free speech. You when control what people say. Gonna tell people what to believe. Gonna tell people. I don't fucking tell any other human being what to say, what to think, and there's no leashes. 
on any of them. Part of it is because UFC fighters are independent contractors. Colby Covington, for instance, says almost anything that pops up in his brain. The guy is reckless on the mic. He is unfiltered and brutal when he is speaking. Yet he has absolute freedom to say whatever he wants. The UFC doesn't control him in any way, shape, or form because he is an independent contractor, currently under contract as an exclusive fighter. An NFL or an NBA star has to think twice before saying or doing certain things. Unless, of course, they want to say anything anti-Trump, then they have a free hand. Take Colin Kaepernick, for example. In 2016, Kaepernick kneeled down during the national anthem as his protest of violence against black people. Many, including Trump, considered the kneeling disrespectful to those who gave their lives for the country. Trump even asked the protesters to be fired. But of course, the NFL upheld the players' right to freedom of expression, which I understand that's commendable and a bit hypocritical because during that same season, the NFL announced that it would fine players who wore American flag themed cleats to remember the 9-11 attacks. How does that make any sense? In the same season, the NFL told the Dallas Cowboys that they couldn't wear helmets to honor five police officers who were tragically killed in 2016. In the same season, the NFL threatened that if Georgia passed a law supporting religious liberty, Atlanta could lose its chance to host a future Super Bowl. Seems a little fishy if you ask me. The NBA's response to Trump's comments was no different. Almost every top player and coach came out and criticized the then president. Coach Greg Popovich even went as far as calling America an embarrassment in the world. Not long after, the NBA was exposed for its selective freedom of expression when an employee was forced into deleting an anti-China tweet. In 2019, the NBA found itself at the center of controversy over freedom of speech following a tweet by Houston Rockets general manager, Daryl Morey, in support of pro-democracy protest in Hong Kong. NBA commissioner Adam Silver later affirmed that the league support freedom of expression and would not censor its players or employees. But the initial reaction to Morey's tweet left many feeling the league had compromised its values. Imagine Dana White in the UFC forcing people to delete tweet. Man. Sean Strickland would have to delete his entire account. That dude is ruthless on social media, but that's who he is and he has every right to express himself. The reason why the likes of Sean Strickland and Colby Covington have different rights when it comes to expressing themselves is based off the fact that the UFC is a completely different model than the NFL or the NBA. The UFC is fighting mixed with show business and entertainment and it ought to show some level of flexibility to maneuver properly. Too many restrictions or too much political correctness would destroy the essence of fighting. It's important to understand the distinctions between Colin Kaepernick's situation with the NFL and Colby Covington's actions in the UFC. Kaepernick, as an employee of the San Francisco 49ers under the NFL Players Union, made a political protest by kneeling during the national anthem at team sanctioned events, which sparked controversy and legal action against the NFL, alleging conclusion to keep him out of the league. On the other hand, Colby Covington, as a UFC fighter, is not an employee, but an independent contractor who pays his own team, he pays his own nutrition, he pays all of his own training, everything is on him. The UFC prefers this structure to avoid the obligations of employing athletes such as providing regular pay, benefits, and allowing unionization. Therefore, the UFC can enforce a code of conduct mainly related to maintaining market share and complying with state athletic commissions. While the UFC mandates fighters to wear sponsored gear and adhere to certain conduct rules during fights, outside of contractual obligations, fighters like Colby have more freedom in expressing themselves compared to traditional team sports. UFC fighters have the freedom to speak and act independently, aligning with their personal beliefs or making statements as long as it complies with regulatory standards and does not violate contract terms during their active contracts. There aren't many sports in the world where you see fighters talk about families and show zero respect to an opponent's religious or cultural beliefs. It's gonna be long, ah, yes. He knows oh, this. Lord, Jamie, that's he knows this. Remember this? You bought me tea, George, a little fat yeah, little black, kid. Black, Don't be like Fucking fool you. Let's, uh, let's Backwards it, cunt. Thanks, Connor. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Assalamu alaikum From the, the truth no. is, UFC fighters have a ton of leverage compared to other athletes, and it's solely up to them whether they use freedom of speech in its entirely or with limitations. 
Whether it's a good or bad thing, at least it's equal for everyone. And it's the fight game. The level playing field is what makes the masses turn to the UFC. And since the sport and the franchise appeals to a very specific audience, it's a great way for politicians like Trump to stay in the spotlight. Donald Trump's card, however, is his love for the sport. Unlike casual celebrity MMA fans, Trump actually loves MMA and is not simply using it to promote himself heading into the 2024 presidential elections. Trump has supporters among the UFC stars such as Jorge Masvidal, Khabib, Colby, who are favored by MAGA supporters. Interestingly, Colby Covington echoed that Trump's claim of electional fraud in December, suggesting that judges conspired against him in his loss to Leon Edwards by unanimous decision. But perhaps the biggest supporter of Trump is Dana White, who has been instrumental in giving Trump the platform to express himself without the fear of being in a hostile environment where a ton of journalists would ask uncomfortable questions. In 2016, as Trump launched his initial campaign for the White House, Dana White publicly voiced his support for his friend at the Republican National Let me tell Convention. You something. I've been in the fight business my whole life. I know fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump is a fighter and I know he will fight for this country. White reaffirmed his support for Trump at the 2020 convention, speaking via satellite during the COVID-19 pandemic, amidst widespread criticism of the president's handling of the outbreak. Let's talk about COVID, and let's be very honest about it. No one person and no one place could have anticipated the challenges that COVID would bring. But President Trump has faced all these obstacles head on. During the Trump administration's effort to reopen the U.S. economy amid the COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent lockdowns, the UFC played a role in these plans through its involvement in the Opening Up America Again strategy. Trump sought to revive sports as a crucial part of his initiative and enlisted key sports executives including Dana White of the UFC, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver, and others like Jerry Jones and Robert Kraft to do the job. When the UFC successfully held UFC 249 as its first pay-per-view event following the pandemic shutdowns, Trump's support was evident. And I want to congratulate Dana White and the UFC. They're going to have a big match. We love it. We think it's important. Get the sports leagues back. Let's play. You do the social distancing and whatever else you have to do. But we need sports. We want our sports back. And congratulations to Dana White UFC. During the UFC 249 broadcast, Dana White received a call from Trump who praised him for the UFC's achievement in becoming the first major sports league to resume hosting events amid the pandemic. Trump expressed confidence in White saying, I knew you were the guy. I knew you'd get it done. No other American sports league has invested as much time and effort as the UFC has in promoting Trump during the election. But perhaps the most significant contribution Trump made to Dana White was his efforts to assist the struggling UFC sponsor, Bud Light. The brand faced a crisis after featuring a transgender spokesman in their Instagram promotions, which angered many male beer drinkers across the country. In response, Bud Light sought to sponsor the UFC as a way to mend fences with its core audience. However, Dana White faced immediate backlash from UFC fans after signing a $105 million annual endorsement deal with Bud Light's parent company. To mitigate the fallout, White reportedly reached out to Trump who issued a statement urging fans to give Bud Light a second chance. Following this support, White invited Trump to UFC 299 in Miami where they were joined by well-wishers such as Barstool Sports, Dave Portnoy, former ESPN anchor, Sage Steele, Ivanka Trump and thousands of enthusiastic supporters. Interestingly, Trump has yet to sway the UFC's main broadcaster Joe Rogan. He has made efforts to go onto his show many times, but the comedian and UFC announcer Joe Rogan has consistently declined. Rogan made it clear to his audience that he has refused multiple invitations to have Trump on, stating that they put too much limits on what they could actually talk about. Nevertheless, Trump has remained supportive of Dana White's UFC brand, publicly endorsing it at a rally in Georgia before UFC 299. Later, I'm going to the UFC fights. You know why? You know why? It's the closest thing I can see that's... Uh, but I'll be going to the UFC fights with some friends, and uh, I look forward to that. Dana White, he's done a great job. I look forward to that. Oh, I hope...
hope he doesn't run for office against me. The relationship between the UFC and Donald Trump is a fruitful one, which not only is mutually beneficial for the two parties involved, but it's also great for sports entities and fans who want politicians to understand how their world works. The UFC is also doing its best to allow everybody a level playing field, no matter the race, gender, or religion. You're not Muslim, Jew, Christian, black, white, gay, straight. You are just a UFC fighter whose performances inside the cage are your only yardstick. It's free and it's fair. If you liked the video, guys, please subscribe. This was a different idea, but I decided to put out a video on it. I thought it was something that I found interesting, so maybe someone else out there did too. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you're interested for more MMA content. Peace.